Hi guys, so in this video, we'll talk about another HFT interview problem, uh, which is based on template meta programming. So the question is simple that you have to check whether a given number is prime number or not at compile time. Okay, again, you have to check it at compile time. So uh, let's jump into it. So let's imagine that this constraint was not given, uh, that you have to basically determine this thing at compile time. I mean, let's say the question was only that you have to check if a number is prime or not. So what you have done or is that or what anyone would have done is that you would have created a function which returns bool uh, whether bool it, it is returning bool because if a number is prime then it will return true and if it is not then it will return false so let's say we will create one method bool is prime and its uh, argument will be an unsigned integer because like we are only concerned about positive integers we don't care about negative integers okay so that's why i'm taking unsigned p and then whatever uh, you have written the implementation inside it and whatever would have been the result you would have returned it okay so whenever you are supposed to write a meta function a template meta function which can do the same so the approach is this i mean i'm telling you how you should approach these kind of problems so that uh, you can easily approach it so the approach is usually this that instead of a function you write a struct okay a c plus plus struct and a templated struct in fact so you write a it can be a struct or it can be a class as well okay so the argument of the template is the argument which is there in this method okay so the argument of the template would be this unsigned p and you create a struct you can name it similar and then you do whatever you want to do in this particular struct okay so this is this is how you can draw the analogy from analogy from you know a function which is supposed to be executed at runtime to the this template meta function which is which executes at compile time okay so let's see how we can do this thing so i have the solution already written here so i will explain you what it is doing so as i mentioned that we have written a template meta function which is nothing but a c++ struct in fact it is a templated struct is a template class and this is prime struct is there which takes the number which is supposed to be checked whether it is prime or not as a template argument and it has nothing it has just a const expert static boolean value okay we were returning bool there so we have this boolean value which will be true or false accordingly if the number p is prime or not okay so why this is static because again we do not want to create the object of this struct okay we do not want to instantiate this struct so how you can access any member of a structure or a class without instantiating it without creating it object its object you can i mean we can access the static members without needing the object of the class because static members can be uh, referenced or can be called with the class name itself okay and another thing is that we do not want to create the object of this struct because object creation requires memory allocation and memory allocation can only be done at compile time it cannot be done at runtime oh sorry memory allocation can only be done at runtime it cannot be done at compile time okay so that's why so that's why this is struct static this is const expert so i have also mentioned this in my previous video in case you do not know about const expert you can just google it about it on cpp reference so so const ref, uh, const expert is nothing but it is just constant expression which means that uh, this particular variable will be initialized as compile time only so this const expert basically makes sure of that constant expression okay and this is inline because we are basically defining this inside the class only this i mean the constraint in c++ is that you cannot define static members inside the class or struct you have to define them outside the class okay this is a primitive uh, primitive data type like this is bool so you can define it without using inline as well but for compound types like classes or structs you cannot do that again to uh, maintain to be homogeneous i have done this i mean that this is in line as well and usually if you'll see the meta functions which are impl implemented by c++ standard library so they are in line as well anyways so what this is doing is nothing it is calling an is prime util method and it is giving it an argument like the first argument is the number prime itself and the second argument is the half of the number so why we are passing half because let's say that this p has like any factor that is d let's say d okay so the thing is that if d is let's say if this is greater than or equal to p by 2 then the other factor that is p by d will definitely be smaller than or uh, will definitely be smaller than or 
equal to p by 2 okay so that's why we only need to to check the factors of p until p by 2 only until half of p we do not need to check other factors from p by 2 plus 1 to p because as i mentioned that if one of the factor is greater than p by 2 then it is guaranteed that the other factor that is p by d will definitely be smaller than p by 2 or equal to p by 2 okay so that's why we are passing the second argument as p by 2 and whatever this struct value comes out to be we are assigning it to this okay then i have like done a specialization of this struct that if you know you are calling is prime with one so one is neither prime nor composite so that's why value is false if you're calling it with two the value is true because two is a prime number and if you're calling this with three then value is again true because three is also a prime number okay so these you can say are more of a base condition so anyways let's see how the is prime util method will work so here is our is prime util template okay this is the actual template or you can see the primary say the primary template so what it is doing as i said if you compare it with a regular function it is taking two arguments one is p and other is this factor d okay so this is a template meta function so those two arguments are actually template arguments and again this is an inline static const x per value and the value is initialized this way we check that p should not be divisible by d i mean if p is a prime number then it should not be divisible by d so that's why we are checking that p mod d should be not equal to zero and we are recursively checking this for all d okay so that is for d equal to 2 to this p by 2 we are checking this so we call this method i mean we recursively call this method and p would be the same but the factor would be d minus 1 okay and eventually this since we are doing recursion here so we need a base condition to terminate ourselves so this is the base condition that when the is prime util method is called with where d is 2 so we simply check that p mod t that p should not be divisible by 2 and we do not need any further recursion now okay because we have exhausted all d from 2 to p by 2 okay so this is mostly it what it is doing so this particular kind of syntax is called partial specialization of template okay and this is called the full specialization so you can differentiate between partial specialization and full specialization by the fact that full specialization has this angular brackets after template empty they, they do not contain anything in it okay but partial specialization have contain something inside angular bracket and then this meta function is also specialized so this is how you can differentiate between partial specialization and full specialization and this is called primary template so primary template has something inside angular brackets but it does not have anything after this is prime okay so this is how you can differentiate between full specialization and par partial specialization i mean partial specialization specifies that this is only implemented for any value of p but d the value of d this d is fixed to here okay but this is a pa primary template so both p and d are not fixed anyways so in the int main function we'll do nothing this is our is prime uh, method template meta function so we are passing it an argument of 5 and we are checking its value so 5 is prime so therefore it should be true 8 is not prime therefore it should be false and similarly so when i run this these are all static asserts so if our program compiles fine then like all the static asserts if all the static asserts pass then only our program will compile so you can see that our program has compiled so it is good i mean if let's say i do this that 5 is not a prime then our this static result will fail and our program will not compile so you can see here that it is saying that at line number 112 which is this our static result has failed anyways so one more thing i want to highlight you is that uh, you cannot call this template meta function for very big values okay let's say i have given the value 100k here 100000 so you cannot call this uh, thing with this i mean this particular static result will fail and the reason it fails is because there is a limit to the instantiations of template i mean you can see here that it is saying fatal error template instantiation depth exceeded and the maximum depth allowed is 900 i mean you can ex uh, increase this depth by using this flag compiler flag f template depth but again this is 900 at the moment so the thing is that this meta function will not work for very large values because again as i said that everything is happening at compile time so compiler also has limitations i mean it can only instantiate so where are these instantiations occurring is that we are calling this is prime util method recursively for so when we are passing the argument as 100k so half of 100,000 is what 50,000 so this is prime util method will be created for all values from d ranging to 2 to 50,000 so those are like almost 
49,999 instantiations, but only 900 instantiations are allowed. So that's why this failed. So this is one of the limitations of template, uh, sorry, meta functions, and you should remember it. Anyways, another thing I want to highlight to you is that these primary templates, I mean, I have said this before as well, these primary templates are not actual structs. They are just template classes or template structs. The actual structures or actual classes are created when you call them, or you can say they are the technical word, word is instantiated when they are called. So let's see what happened at compiler level. So this I have opened it in CPP insights. So let's say that uh, what I have done is this, that I am calling, I'm doing a static wizard for is prime 17. So what would happen that from the is prime template, this here, this class would be instantiated. Now this is, this was just a template struct, but actual struct will be instantiated. So here it has been instantiated. This is the actual structure. Okay. And you can see that the value is 17 here. Now this 17 leads to more instantiations of this is prime util. So you can see that we were doing this is prime util p comma p by 2. So here p is 17 and p by 2 is 8. So we will see that this is prime util 17 comma 8 must have been instantiated. So let's see what happened. Again, this was our template. This was not an actual structure. This was just a template class or template structure. Okay. And here, here is this, this actual structure was instantiated by a compiler is prime util 17 comma eight. So its definition is this, that we were checking that 17 should not be divisible by eight. And then we recursively check for D minus one. Okay. So eight minus one, that is seven. So you can see here is prime util 17 comma seven. Now this would have been instantiated. Here it is 17 comma seven. Okay. Then 17 comma seven will lead to instantiation of 17 comma six. So here it is another structure. These are all unique structures then 17 comma 6 will in lead to instantiation of 17 comma 5 and so on it will keep on going until we have reached 17 comma 2 A at this moment this is our termination of recursion and no more steps would be further instantiated so the error which we were getting here for when i put the value of p as 100000 that only 900 maximum instantiations are allowed so these were those instantiations as you saw that all these structures were created so these were the instantiations, instantiations it was talking about. So anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and I'll see you all next time.